And you think about that. How awesome is this God that we serve that he holds the world right in the palm of his hand? And the child looked at the parent and said, but what I'm having trouble uh, understanding is how he's so big that he holds the world in the palm of his hand, yet he's able to live in my heart. And how astonishing that must have been coming from that child. But to know that this God that we serve loves us so much that he holds the world in the palm of his hand. Uh, one place talked about that we were in his hand and couldn't nobody take us out. I love that. That's good news to me. How about uh, you out there tonight that's listening? Maybe, maybe you've tried things. Maybe you're trying things right now and everything you're trying is failing. But can I tell you tonight that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son for you. And I guarantee if you'll try him and taste of him, you'll see that he's good. And that he'll do for you what that, that, that you're searching for, what it can't do but that he's big enough that he holds the world in the palm of his hand, but yet he's able to live in the heart of man. That's so awesome. And he went on and said that he gave uh, he, the greatest act that's ever occurred in this world was when the Father gave his Son, and his Son gave his life for you and I to be a sacrifice for the sins of the world. The Father willingly offered up his Son so everyone could find a substitution uh, payment for the forgiveness of their sin. If they'll just acknowledge their sin, believe him, and ask him to be Lord and Savior of their life. That's how easy it is out there tonight, uh, friend, those of you that's watching that don't know him. You may say, well, I've tried before, and I can't in yourself. You can't. I can't. I don't know of anybody that can, but in him, we can. Uh, he is our peace when we have no peace. He is our hope when we have no hope. When, when we don't see a way out, he's the way maker. And he'll even make a way when there seemeth to be no way. But the greatest, the greatest thing that was ever given, given was Christ, was God giving his son, Jesus Christ. And not only that, but his only begotten son. It was the greatest gift. We just, uh, we just left Christmas and we exchanged those gifts and we gave the best, that, the, gift, the best gift we thought that we could find for that person that we love. But the greatest gift that was ever given was the gift of Jesus Christ. That night that he came and they laid him in that little old manger there in the end, the greatest gift. Uh, says the greatest, even though the gift of a new baby, it, how wonderful it is and, 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 and the, the, the memories that we have. But the indescribable gift of Christ dying on the cross, resurrecting from the grave so that all who believe in him can have eternal life. That's, that's, that's awesome tonight. That's how easy uh, that it is to be saved tonight. And he went so far as to say that whosoever, I'm glad tonight that I'm a whosoever. The greatest opportunity, uh, but it's a sad note that it says uh, that 90% of the world has failed to take advantage of the opportunity to be born again. And, and we read that in John chapter 3, 16. And if you back up to the beginning of chapter 3, uh, you'll learn about this man called Nicodemus and how that he came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus was a smart man. Uh, no doubt he was a wealthy man. But he came to Jesus by night. And, and I've often wondered why that he would wait till it got night. He didn't want nobody to see I believe, I can't prove that, but that's just, that's just Stan's take on it. He didn't want nobody to see him going, but he went to him and he began to ask him about being saved and what he, what he would have to do, and, and, and Jesus told him. And he came back to Jesus and he said, but how can, Jesus told him you must be born again. And he said, well, how can I be an old man? How can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? See, he was looking on the fleshly part. They can't none of us do that. But on the on the spiritual part, we can take this fleshly part and kneel at an altar and get down and pray. And just as it says, ask God to come into our life and to forgive us. That's how uh, that's how easy it is. We accept that He came, and we believe that He died, and we believe that He rose again, and and that He's sitting right now at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding for you and I. And then the Bible says we confess that. So those of you that's watching tonight, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity here just in a, in a few minutes to, uh, to pray and ask the Lord to save you. Billions will someday stand before the judgment seat of Christ and hear him say, 
I never knew you. Depart from me into everlasting fire. And as a brother said on here earlier, come down the road, uh, that place was not prepared for you, but it's reserved for the devil and his angels. And I told somebody, I said, if we go there, we'll go as an intruder. That place was not prepared for us. So please don't miss out on taking advantage of the opportunity that you have in that verse. He went on and said, believes the greatest uh, simple act to gain eternal life in forgiveness and deliverance from the penalty of our sin from hell, eternal separation from God and judgment is only to believe. We must believe. The Bible says we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Uh, things that are impossible with men uh, 